Good morning, dear Minister Grutters, dear Secretary Bola, dear Professor Partzinger, dear Petra Vesla, dear Professor Eisenhower, ladies and gentlemen. Today's ceremony is both exciting and frustrating in equal measures. In spite of these strange circumstances that we find ourselves in, we can at least celebrate the return of this wonderful building back to the city, or at least back to its owners, as the first step in it once again playing its important role in the cultural life and identity of Berlin. We have all become familiar with this virtual world, and we've probably learned some lasting lessons. However, a virtual handing over of an architectural monument is not a very satisfying proposition for all involved, especially after working so many years so closely with this great piece of architecture. Indeed, suspended as we all are in our ambiguous condition, where parts of our physical world have become more important while others have faded, today's experience only confirms the importance of the physical and social dimensions of our lives. This great building of the architectural master, Mies van der Rohe, is not only a testament to architecture in its physical, material and spatial possibilities, but it is also a testament to the important role that architecture plays in society and its potential to focus ambitions and aspirations and to represent our desire for community in its physical form. It is difficult to think of another building that so directly represents the potential power of architecture. In its realisation, it shows the principal ideas of its architect and as one of his most important works, it occupies a place in the history of architecture, finding extreme harmony in the coordination of structure and space, construction and material, purpose and form. Its importance in the canon of modern architecture is not in doubt, nor is its importance in the history of post-war Berlin. Sitting alongside the great cultural monuments of Han Shirun in the Kulturform, it carried the purpose not only of being a museum, but as a symbolic representation of the reconstruction of Berlin, and more specifically, as a part of the resolute determination of West Berlin to represent itself as a city in its own right. Although criticised from the start for being a project conceived for other locations and for its difficulty as a place to show art, and later on, on a technical level, for not being constructed considering climate, over the last 50 years, the building has found its place in the ever-changing physical and political landscape of Berlin and the, in the hearts of its citizens. This utopian building has survived proudly and today once again shines with its original optimism, an optimism that surely we need today more than ever. This restoration project has been a work of great collaboration and I thank all of our partners, clients, colleagues and consultants for being so fully and positively engaged in this complicated project. The results of our collective work are, I think, visible today, but the results are based on process. A project like this is not about visions, but making intelligent decisions, doing the right things together and not making silly mistakes. On the face of it, and compared to designing and building a new project, the task of repair and restoration seems quite straightforward, but is often a process full of traps and its history littered with disappointing results. The restoration of buildings is often a death by a thousand cuts. No single stab is fatal, but the cumulative effect kills the victim. While appearances might be kept, 
the spirit and the ideas are often lost. With such a modern building as this one, everything was potentially replaceable and available. There are no elements of hand-produced workmanship. It is in its very spirit, mechanical and technical. But we knew that if we replaced all of its original parts, we would lose our hold on it, as if the soul was still in the material itself. Instead, we removed more than 30,000 pieces, cleaned, repaired and replaced, ensuring that we didn't slide into a casual mode but maintained a rigorous discipline, staying as close to the building as its, and its inherent character as possible. I believe that this was the key to achieving the quality of the project and we must be extremely grateful for being allowed and encouraged to follow this route. As well as thanking our clients and partners, I want to thank and congratulate our own team, most especially the directors of the project, Martin Reichardt and Sasha Schwartz, as well as the project architects who really carried the day-to-day -day responsibilities, Daniel Wendler and Michael Freitag. This has required devotion and patience, as well as sheer hard work. I also thank the rest of our team and all of our consultants and expert advisors for their dedication and support, and of course to the many contractors and suppliers and specialists for the quality of their work. It is of course rewarding to hear the positive reaction to this project, but of course our task was to return somebody else's work to the condition that it deserved to be in. We knew that our presence would only be evident through the making of mistakes. Not failing was our mission, and I feel reasonably comfortable that we succeeded. We can now step behind, step back behind the curtain and be happy that this great piece of architecture is once again on show at its best, and be proud to be associated with it and the work of the architect that we are really here to celebrate today, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. Thank you very much.